Hello, welcome Vault Dwellers. I'm going to be releasing a short series of videos documenting my construction of my new lodge. As you can see we're here with my uh, Rifleman slash Crit Commando build. And we're going to go have a look at my current lodge, which I'm hoping to replace now there's a few more pieces out for this type of build. Time to make a fresh pot of sweet potato stew. I've tried to give it that cosy feel by keeping the room small. I'm going to try and replicate some of this uh, lodge charm, but with a uh, more focus on some architecture. I'm also going to show you the chick tips and tricks I use to combat my growing OCD. Okay, so, take a note, I like to build under this bridge, it's just a nice place in the forest. So, activate camp 2. So as long as you've activated your camp 2, you should be able to place down your uh, Workshop, about to destroy the other one. Try and aim in the middle of somewhere flat. So that's a good start. Yep. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is uh, get a sense of where you fast travel in. This is a big mistake from a lot of players. So. If you've played for that, for a little while, you know you can't fast travel straight next to your camp if you're already there, so walk some distance away. Yes, uh, this is a very lethal build, I might add. I've still got to add in the explosive cards. It is a bloody explosive rifle, nothing too crazy, but it does the job. I would suggest using a bloody lever action or a quad lever action, just as efficient, maybe with that's hit chance. I really don't need the less AP because every piece of my armor has got AP regen on it. Okay, so let's see if we can fast travel to our camp. Let's have another go, shall we? Ah, for some reason it doesn't like it. Typical fallout. I'm going to be trying to keep my videos to around 10 minutes. For the simple reason I've got a lot on at the minute. Work commitments. Personal life. You name it. The only thing I will say about using an explosive rifle. It don't have to draw enemies in. Which is good because I prefer they uh, make themselves visible anyway. Right, let's have another go. Here we go. So take note of where you fast travel in, because this is where other players are likely to fast travel in. Now this is where you want to aim the focus of the front of your build, or maybe vendor shops. So as you can see, we're heading into our camp. From this direction which is basically where you put down this camp i mean i'm pretty good at this by now <laughs> i've built enough of these so i do have in my mind roughly what i want to build now although we have lots of options when it comes to flooring 
I like to stand, start with this. This is the choice of wood floor that I'm going to be using. Now, as I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I don't want to see grass, any kind of rubbish poking through my floor. That's important to get the height right. And yes, some enemies will get trapped underneath your camp. There's not a lot you can do about that. So this is more about... Checking out the floor, seeing what happens. You're going to have to have some idea of your layout. Otherwise you're going to have no way of checking this. So what you're looking for is... You know, making sure there's no grass, debris, poking through. Now, most people don't know that the floors aren't exactly the same when you rotate them around. And that can become annoying, so... But I'm going to show you my little method. And you want to try and keep your build in the middle of the circle. I know that sounds obvious, but there's nothing more frustrating than getting towards the edge of your build thinking, I'll just put down one lovely bit of railing to find out you can't. This is going to be the basic layout. Now to check this, I'm going to use my vault check method because I just find this the simplest and easiest way to check if they line up. does involve changing them over, but <laughs> whatever. Obviously, if you're a new builder, concrete might become a bit of an issue, but you just take yourself a workshop, watch out for people like me that come along and destroy it, take all your goodies. You know, my advice, if you're going to take workshops and collect resources, build a stash box right next to your resource collector and when you're in your workshop go into sneak mode so people can't see you there on the map it's going to give you a much better chance of surviving there are people that will just kill you and I have nothing against that right as you can see these all line up now because of the patterns line up with each other. Now it doesn't seem that important. I mean you can live with it not quite perfect if you don't mind. But that's not what we're about on this channel. Now you'll notice when you switch them back, let's just do a double check, make sure it looks right. Yeah, you can see that they're all the same. When you convert them back, you'll find the actual grains and floor panels in the wood line up with each other perfectly. You can also set your second floor using the vault tech pieces to match the ground floor or you can choose to have it going whichever way you want sometimes it will glitch out like that and the best thing to do is just to exit and go back in okay so we're going to need these. Now you can switch these up. To windows, doors, whatever you like. When you've finished messing around. That's a basic layout. And because we're going to try and keep this cosy.
I don't want to make the first floor too high. The second floor, I do want to make higher because I want the views to be not obstructed by the ground floor when you're up there. This is going to be a hunting lodge. So the idea really is that I'm going to be able to shoot. I'm going to pop, pop some stuff down just... Yeah, you've got to be very careful where you put your walls, where they line up with the other ones. Otherwise it's going to hinder you when you come to place walls above them. Okay, so now we're going to go into... I'm just going to put down these roofs. I can show you something. Now, with this set, seeing the uh, this inside wall isn't the worst, but when you have like, let's say, one of these walls, it's pretty hideous, I'm not going to lie. So you might be thinking, well how do I hide that? Because you won't be able to place one of these down. You've already got a roof piece there. Now how do you hide that sort of monstrosity? Well I like to use this technique. You go along to wall decor, pick a flag, just pop your flag on there, like so. Make sure it's on the wall that you're actually trying to fix the roof to. Right, we'll start this side because You'll notice you can place that down there now. If you try and snap it to this, it might not go down. So you're definitely going to repeat the process, basically like this. You just have to make sure the flags on the wall you're trying to snap the roof piece under another roof piece. There's also another method you can use where you use a flamethrower to destroy the original roof piece. But most people aren't going to have access to that flamethrower early on. So, But I'm not going to need this. Because thankfully, to save the ultimate wisdom, you actually have a wooden finish on both sides. So, And we want that lodge feel, so I like to have that high ceiling. Now, whilst we're on the subject, if I turn this into a window like this, and I then chose to put some stairs down, I'm not going to be able to put a curtain on that window. So what you can do is put the curtain on the window first. Right, they've changed it. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can... Uh... Let's have a look. See if they fixed it. No. So now you can't have a uh, curtain where you want it. Thanks, Mercedes. Now you notice you can't get rid of that that set of stairs. So it's one of those things where unfortunately you're going to have to remove every piece of wall connecting to them. Until you're left with nothing. Pain in the butt. Now these doors aren't finished positions, they just they just allow me to uh <laughs> exit the 